Welcome to our shortened service of morning prayer. This morning, if you're a visitor, you're very welcome. If you're listening online, it's great to have you. If you're listening at home on, uh, on a CD, thank you for, for joining us. We're gathered here this morning to worship and to praise our God. And it's customary to start the service with a sentence of scripture, but when Robert phoned me earlier in the week and gave me the two hymns that he'd chosen for today, Charles Gabriel wrote her first hymn, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. And he wrote it based on what he'd read in Luke's Gospel, the account of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And that's a great place to start. Listen to these verses. He withdrew, this is Jesus, about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, save this cup, take this cup from me, yet not my will but yours. And the angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. That's who we're coming to worship this morning. That's who we're coming to sing our praises to this morning. Someone who in anguish gave his life for you and gave his life for me. I'm going to follow David Lutzman's lead. It's a very warm morning. Robert, lead us in worship as we stand to sing. I stand amazed in the presence.
be seated. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship, our praise and our thanksgiving. To confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness. To hear his holy word proclaimed. To bring before him our needs and the needs of the world. And to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let's confess our sins to God our Father as we say together. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 11. If you've got your Bibles, open them. If you're at home, get your Bible now and open it to Matthew chapter 11. Beginning to read at verse... 18. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he is a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment and for you. And for you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to the heavens? No. You will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. At this time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble 
in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May God bless the reading of his word to our souls. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Merciful Father, in your presence there is forgiveness. There is healing and there is restoration. You offer us through Christ pardon for our sin, a new beginning, a rebirthing, and a life of peace and of joy. Thank you, Father God. Jesus, we cannot comprehend the sacrifice you made for us, the whosoever's. You hung on Calvary's cross for the sinner, the lost, the hurt, the poor, the lonely, the dregs of our society, the addicts, the prostitutes, the whosoever's. Thank you that the whosoever includes me and includes you. Holy Spirit, thank you for being our helper and our guide. Help us to discern your promptings more in our daily lives and here in our church family. Help us to realize the enormity of the helper you are and want to be to each one of us. Amen. As we continue in prayer and think of our parish this morning, we pray for every person who in some way has been associated with this place. Father God, we give you thanks for every individual who has visited your house here in Ballandary down through the years. Forgive us for those we as a church have let down, have misunderstood or perhaps failed to see the potential for service. Help us to pray earnestly for our rector, Trevor. Help us to pray for all our parishioners. Help us as a church to mission here to our families to our neighbours and to our local community. And to that end, Father God, nurture in us a pastoral love that is evidenced by our actions to the young people, to the older and wiser generation, to all who do not yet know your Son, Christ, as their Saviour and Lord. Grow us as your church into a Christ-loving people. Evidence in abundance by our love for others. Dear God, with every head bowed this morning, there is a, a partner represented, a family, a husband, a wife, all with individual needs. Maybe a grandparent or a friend. In a few moments, say, and let's, let us bring to God our individual needs and requests. Your word prompts us to bring our requests to you. Let's do that now in a few moments, silence, believing that God will answer prayer. As we continue in prayer, we pray for our nation. Dear God, guide our government through these difficult days. Help them to support the weak, the vulnerable, the needy in our society. We pray for our local storm and assembly. Empower our leaders to govern us with fairness. 
help our ministers to seek the greater good for all. We pray for the sick of our parents this morning. Heavenly Father, you know the physical pain of your flock. You went out of your way through your son to find the sick. See the needs of all among us who need your healing touch. Walk alongside those through going through all kinds of treatments. Hold the weak and the sick firmly in your healing hands and embrace the frightened and those who are afraid of what the future holds. Bind up the wounds, Lord. Heal the sick. Finally, we remember in prayer our mission partners, the Mwangis and our brothers and sisters in Christ in a worry. Lord, we pray for the Mwangis and their ongoing work. The mission field can be a lonely place, especially in these COVID restricted times. Strengthen their faith. And give them a determination to serve you, no matter what. We pray for peace this morning in Tigray, in Ethiopia. We pray for crops. We pray for a harvest. And for food supplies. We pray for healing to the physical and the mental injuries as a result of the war. We pray this morning that the people of God in Tigray will be blessed even in these unimaginable difficult times. Show us as your servants how to help practically. Move our hearts and help us to be a channel of your support and your love. All these prayers we ask in your precious name. Jesus Christ. Let's conclude our prayers by saying the grace together. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. The context to Today's Bible reading and to my little sermon, which I've entitled Judging the Person, Missing the Message. You take nothing else away from today. Try and remember that. Judging the Person, Missing the Message. Context the reading from Matthew is that Jesus had just sent out his 12 disciples with specific instructions for them to seek out what he called the lost sheep of Israel. They were to proclaim that the kingdom of God had come in the person of Jesus Christ. And he told his disciples what to expect as they tried to spread that message. They would be like sheep among wolves, he told them. Like sheep among wolves. And yet, God word, God's word tells us that they had the power to raise the dead to heal the sick, and even to drive out demons. A miraculous ministry, a saving ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. But they would be like sheep among wolves. Messenger with the best news that anyone could ever deliver. And yet they were so often judged wrongly. And the message was missed. What do you hear when you're presented with the gospel message? Does it matter how it's portrayed? Does it matter who speaks it to you? Does it matter how the good news of salvation and God's truths, his amazing grace is spoken to you? You know, when someone begins to address us 
We tend to form opinions on them really quickly. Really quickly. It's a human, human instinct. And that can actually affect what we hear, or if we hear at all, any message. Already this morning, you've began to form opinions of me. And that might affect whether you hear God speaking to you today. How I look, how I speak, what you've heard about me, some good, maybe some not so good very natural and it's very normal and we all tend to form such opinions on each other quickly human instinct but it can affect what we hear interestingly we normally tend to form these opinions based on our own experiences our own values our own expectations so, for example, if education is important to you, that will feed directly into how you judge someone and how you value what they say or maybe don't value it at all. Perhaps someone's colour, perhaps their height, perhaps their weight, perhaps if they're wearing the right suit or the right dress. Maybe a certain denomination switches you off very quickly. Our own biases affect the lens and the ears through which we see and we hear from God. They can so easily blind and deafen us completely to what is being said. You know, I used to work, used to work with a man who said on a regular basis, if the director who owned the business we were working for was going to heaven, that that was a place this colleague would never want to go because what he heard and saw in the witness of the director put him completely off any message that he would ever hear of how Christ could change his life. You need to be careful about judging the person and missing the message. Matthew 11 and verse 18. For John came neither eating nor drinking. And they said he has a demon. The disheveled John the Baptist. The great forerunner to Christ. Was often judged wrongly. And his message was ignored. The Bible tells us he dressed in camel hair. And he wandered about the wilderness eating locusts. Declaring that the Messiah was coming. If we had been there, what would we have seen in John the Baptist? What would we have heard from John the Baptist? Would we have cast him aside with a tut, like a bit of a tramp? Or regarded him as a bit of a nutcase, as many did? What if the gospel message came to you this morning from a bunch of fishermen, Simon Peter and Andrew, his brother, along with James and his brother, John, men who Christ physically called from their stinking fishing boats? Would you listen to the gospel message from them? Or would you spend more time ridiculing their appearance their intellect, their background, with your quickly formed opinion of the messenger, deafen your ears to the truth of the gospel that God called them to spread. Even as we enter God's house, as we go to church, nowadays so many of us want to hear from God on our terms. In ways that satisfy our opinions. We want to hear from. God. We want to hear from God. But through someone we deem acceptable. Sometimes even as Christians. We fall into the same way of reacting. 
to the truths of God depending on who speaks them to us. We need to remember God never changes. God's message is never altered. By his spirit, God speaks through many people on his earth at a time of his choosing. Are we listening? Are we hearing from God? Are we willing to hear from God based on his terms, his opinions, about his unchanging truths? Verse 19 says, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, He is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. As we sit in church this morning, would you have judged Jesus and his message like that? If you'd have been there, would you have, would you have thought Jesus moved in the socially acceptable cir circumstances or circles that we're attracted to? Would he have dressed well enough for you? Would he have spoken well enough? Would he have the right PC ideas on how to live nowadays? Or would you have judged the person of Christ and not heard what he came to say? Would you have judged the person and missed the message? The good news this morning, the good news is John the Baptist heard and then he saw the person of Christ for who he was and what he was saying to all around him. He saw and he heard. He listened. John 3 and verse 11 says, John said, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who's more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. John knew. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He recognized the person of Christ and he heard his message. And you know the good news, the good news of this morning is God's gracious gift to John in the person of his son. The good news, the gracious gift that John accepted is the same gift that he wants you to hear about today, 2,000 years later. The message is still the same. John will spend eternity with the one, Christ Jesus, who he heard and he recognized as the Savior of the world. That's who's speaking today through his word. The message the same. How about us sitting in church today? Are you choosing to hear the message? The good news of the gospel? Or have you come this morning for religious practice? One is empty. The other provide you with eternal life that's full of joy and peace. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. We can't leave our reading there this morning. Verse 20 to 24 refers to the towns where Miracles have been carried out. What if miracles were being carried out in North Street, in Lower Ballandary, in Upper Ballandary? 
and someone like Christ was walking amongst us, would we listen to his message? In these times, Christ had sent his men out, as I said at the start, to call for repentance. It requires a response, but the Bible tells us the people of those areas fail to listen, many of them, and they fail to repent. They judge the person and they miss the message. And sadly, verse 20 to 24 tells us of the distinct judgment of God. There's good news, but there's sad news. And sadly, part of the message found in Matthew is that on the day of God's judgment, the only destiny for the unhearing, unrepentant sinner is hell. Eternally lost. The gospel message, you know, that I want you to hear this morning is really that simple. Choose Christ and repent. That is to acknowledge and to say sorry for your sin and to ask him into your heart and into your life as your Savior and Lord. Or discount the message. Ignore Christ as an irrelevance in your life. And sadly, God's word tells us that your destiny, if that's what you choose, is hell. You know, I became a lay reader so that I can try with God's help to point people to Christ. For me, it's that simple. So that you can hear the message that he can change your life. I really want to try and help people to listen. Put aside whatever you think about me. Listen to God. Listen to Christ. I want you to really understand that he can change your life. No matter how big a mess you think you've made of it so far. You're one of the whosoevers. And Christ is calling, even this morning, on your life. When you read on in Matthew chapter 11, here's more of Christ's message for us as a church today. Verse 28. Amazing words. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Are you listening? Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. You learning from him? He says, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And what will you find? You'll find rest for your souls. Thank you, Jesus. The last few months has been tough for many of us. COVID restrictions have affected us physically and also mentally. Look how different we're having to do church even as we try to protect each other. But that same Christ with the same message still sits on his throne. And the only opinion that really matters here today, the only words that you need to hear today are his words. Holy Spirit, help us in church today to listen. Foretold by John the Baptist and for over 2,000 years, 
The Christ that we've read about in the Gospel of Matthew is calling you. He's seeking you out. And you know, for those of us who are his followers, Christ followers, Christians, he's longing to speak to us as well. Every day, through his word and by his spirit. Do you hear him? Or maybe your opinions on how we're doing church. And this is wrong. and That's wrong. I don't like this and I don't like that. Maybe they're blinding you. And deafening you. To what God is trying to speak into your life. Every day. Are you choosing to allow Christ to enrich your life. Through his word. Because you're choosing to listen. Are you suppressing. Or even better. Trying to cut out your own biased. My own biased opinions. On others. And how they speak. Or how they do church. It's good to cut that out. You know why? It's so easy for that to grow into a critical spirit. And there's nothing. Brothers and sisters in Christ. There's nothing that will blind you to hearing God. More than a critical spirit. We need to choose to listen. We need to allow God to speak through his word directly into our lives every day. I need to close. Will you listen? Will you let Christ lighten your burdens this week? That's what his word tells us he wants to do. Will you accept the rest that can only be found in him and that he wants to give to you. Are you worried about your health? Are you worried about a relationship? Are you maybe struggling with depression or even worse, you're maybe working through grief? Sometimes you know it's in the lowest parts, points of our life that it's more difficult to listen to God. It's harder sometimes. But he still speaks. And with the help of his Holy Spirit, if we allow us, his word tells us this morning, even in the worst circumstances, he will speak directly into our souls. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. And this summer, Sunday morning, will you choose to listen? Have to finish. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Wish I could repeat it all day in the hope that you'll listen. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Judging the person, missing the message. I'm going to finish with a wee practical person, personal example of what I mean. Um, some of you this week. Um, maybe heard or watched online like I did, the funeral of Pastor McConnell of the Whitewell Tabernacle Church in Belfast. And that's somewhere that we as a family used to like to go to 10 or 50 years ago on a Sunday evening. He was a messenger who was criticised. He had his critics. His altar call far too long. Shouldn't be begging people to become Christians. Collected the collection in the first hymn. Shouldn't be doing that before we've heard the sermon. Make sure there's value for money. 
It has critics even in later years. But one Sunday evening, the messenger, James McConnell, preached a sermon. And my only son, when he gave the altar call, raised his wee hand. He said, yes, I want to become a Christian. Didn't judge the messenger. Heard the message. Responded. We went into a wee room afterwards and as they prayed with Daniel and he prayed the simple prayer of repentance. Lord, come into my life. I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong. I want you as my saviour and Lord. And as he cried and as I cried in that moment, because he heard the message, his life was changed for all of eternity. God's word and message comes to us as unto little children. And if we are prepared to accept it as a child does, simply, even today, even today, he'll embrace you with his loving arms as your Savior and Lord for all of eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads before we sing our final hymn. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Help us to listen to it. Help us to learn from it. And if there's someone in church today that doesn't know you as their Lord and as their Savior and as their Master, Lord, will you give them the courage this morning to reach out even today to say sorry, to ask you to come into their life as Savior and Lord. On this summer Sunday morning, to, group, to gain the unimaginable praise of eternal peace and joy. Lord, may you let that happen by your Spirit. Move on someone's life even here this morning. Give them the courage. Draw them unto yourself in love and in mercy and because of your grace. In your precious name we pray. Amen. We're going to stand and we're going to sing our final hymn. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? Let's stand as we sing.
Let's pray. May we live by faith, walk in hope, and be renewed in love until this world reflects your glory and you are all in all. Even so, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please remain seated until the wardens come and direct you to leave. It's warm, I know it's hot, and you can't wait to get out and get the Ambrose Solaire on, um, but they're trying to uh, protect you. It's for your safety. Just wait until they direct you to leave. And dare to come back next Sunday, and dare to bring somebody with you. If you read on in Matthew, Jesus is tackled about the Sabbath. What do we do on a Sunday? What should we do? What should we not do? Would you like a list of do's and don'ts? You're not going to get it from me. That's what I'm going to be speaking about next Sunday. Dare to bring somebody that they can hear the gospel message here in Ballandere. Amen. Thank you for listening.